What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. We're going to be talking about a few different horror topics in this video here today. We'll be talking about Saw 11, Scream 7, and Maxine. Now, I do want to kick this video off by addressing the status of Saw 11, and that is that there we still have heard nothing. The last thing we heard was a rumored filming time to start in May. Now, of course, we're officially done with May. There's been no casting news. There's been no status update on the script. There's been no status update on anything as far as like Saw 11. All we know is that instead of coming out this year, the film has effectively been moved to September of next year. And at this point, without even knowing that they're filming, I would have to expect that Saw 11 is going to actually start filming in 2025, very early on. And it'll release that same year It'll do the same thing like what happened with Saw X just now with a bit more time to cook whatever it is they're cooking up, have less of a rushed production time frame, have less of anything they have to worry about as far as like not coming back or behind a film of the magnitude that Saw X was for this franchise and delivering another stinker. They don't have to worry about that. You have enough time now to cook up a decent story, get all the right people assembled, do everything you need to as far as ensuring that Saw 11 is on the same page, if not, hopefully, even better than Saw X versus what we could have potentially gotten this year. Not that they couldn't have done it, but there is obviously these things we hear from viewer non with producers getting on people's bad side and all these other alleged things and interference from certain producers who have been responsible for some of the other lackluster entries in the past. So hopefully Saw 11 is able to start filming in early 2025 if not this year i just don't think it'll happen this year at this point i think what they will aim to do is get this perfect script down all through this year and then at early january february of next year they'll shoot the movie and the movie will be out by september that same year and you'll have another banger on your hands from john kramer and his shenanigans when it comes to being jigsaw and hopefully of course amanda will be involved hoffman uh We'll see Dr. Cecilia again. Hopefully all of that comes to fruition in Saw 11. Now, we need to talk about Maxine. Maxine is supposed to release over a little over a month away at this point. We're a little over a month away from Maxine, almost less than a month to go. And I know a lot of you are excited. I just want to go over some things you can expect in this film. Some of you have already seen me talk about this stuff over on Twitter, but... Maxine Minks, first and foremost, that is not Maxine's name. Her name is Maxine, that's her first name, <laughs> but her last name is a front. Uh, think of Judy Jurgenstern, aka Jennifer Jo Lee from Scream 3. I've talked about how this film is very Scream 3 coded to me, and that's just another thing that's Scream 3 coded because you're going to find out this person's real name. Maxine's last name is not minx i will say that the last name does start with an m she has the same initials it's just not minx so take of that what you will start predicting what you think her last name is you'll find out when maxine drops next month i do also want to address the fact that the finale of the movie as many people have been speculating to my knowledge if you don't want to know about this you shouldn't be watching but i'm just going to go ahead and say it the finale does in fact take place in that photo where you see Max standing looks like what beneath is the Hollywood sign. That's at a Hollywood Hills mansion. That's where the final act will take place. That's where a lot of crazy things go down. That's where the killer will be revealed. A motive. A motive that is very fitting for a potential seventh screen film. But I doubt that will be the motive now. You'll see what I mean when you see the movie. And the last thing I was going to talk about was related to this soundtrack that Maxine allegedly has it's unconfirmed just rumored but these are some of the songs you can expect to see in Maxine Robert Palmer's Addicted to Love The Misfits Blood Feast Any Motion or Anti-Motion Obsession Missing Persons Walking in LA Rockwell Somebody's Watching Me Motley Crue's Bastard Righteous Brothers Unchained Melody Eurythmics Sisters Are Doing It For Themselves Killing Joke Love Like Blood, Twisted Sister, Burning Hell, Frankie Goes to Hollywood, Welcome to the Pleasure Dome, New Order, Shell Shock, and Kim Carnes's Betty Davis Eyes. So that is the alleged soundtrack for Maxine. We'll see if this is confirmed. I do want to point out that I think one of these songs has been replaced 
by Give Me All Your Lovin' by ZZ Top. Uh, I think that's the name of the song. I think that has worked its way into the final cut of the film, but we'll see if all these other songs have worked their way in. What do you guys think about the potential soundtrack for Maxine? What do you think about finding out Maxine's last name? What do you think that last name is? Let me know all that down in the comment section below. The last thing we're going to talk about here is related to Scream 7. So Nev Campbell had another interview with People where she talked about her excitement for the film, and I wanted to share my thoughts on this. She says, so those movies have been such a big part of my life and it means so much to me and I was sad to miss the last one to not be part of it. I was really grateful that they came back to me in a respectful way. I think that means a lot to women and to society. I'm grateful to be able to step into Sydney's shoes again and tell her story. Uh, she goes on to talk about how Sydney is so strong and inspirational to a lot of people. I meet a lot of fans who say her strength has helped them get through tough times and it means more than I could ever have imagined to some people. Now, I've seen the thoughts online about this. And my thoughts on this are just as simple as what I've been saying in the past. I struggle to see where Nev has made any switch up in talking about what she's talking about right now. When she's talking about they came to her in a respectful way, she's made it very clear ever since her departure from Six. She's talking about money. I saw everybody taking, not everybody, but some people taking their liberties with what she was addressing when it came to that fallout and her departure from Six saying how oh how can she stand up for women when she's doing this after such and such happened which i understand but she is in fact being consistent in what she's talking about she's still talking about money the unfortunate thing is talking about money and only being focused on money has come back to bite her for a lot of people in the fandom if you can't understand that i don't know what to tell you but it's pretty clear to me why it is coming back to bite her because still despite everything that's transpired we're still making it clear that to her it was all about the money. Now, I'm not knocking her for that. I get what she's doing. I understand it. I get it's a business. It's your job. I get it. Do you. But because of the fact of what happened to Melissa Barrera, this is not sitting well with some people. As far as Melissa Barrera herself goes, yes, it's a dead horse to some people, but to some people it's not. She can talk about that as much as she wants to, just like Nev can talk about this. She keeps talking about how they came back to her in a respectful way. She said this a few times at this point. So why is it that Melissa can't talk about her situation, but Nev can talk about hers? Explain that to me. I think both ladies can talk about whatever they want to talk about as often as they want to, as frequently as they want to. If you're asking them about it, they're going to talk about it. That's just how this works. It's not like they're going out of their way to just talk about it at random. The, they're being asked about these things but i will say this in response to melissa barrera's uh unfortunate dismissal a lot of people will say oh i'm sick of hearing about melissa barrera and if you're sick of hearing about her and chronically online on twitter specifically why have you not taken the steps to mute and block certain words block certain accounts you cannot be tired of her or convince me that you're tired of her. And yet you engage in every little thing that relates to this woman in her situation that you claim to be tired of. You're not tired of it. If you actually were tired of it, you would take some steps to get it off your feed. You're not tired of it. You're just tired of hearing about her because you would prefer to hear about Nev Campbell. That's what it comes off like. Me, myself... I don't mind hearing about either one of these women. They have a right to talk about what they please to talk about. And again, it's not like either one of them are the ones telling these interviewers to ask them about these things. They ask them about it and they address it. The interviewers are doing what they would do because they know it's going to bring in traction. That's how the game works. Smarten up. Let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications. You can never the video. In the description, I'll have links on my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there. Of course, let me know any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.